I hate Matt Hazard. Yeah, Neil Patrick Harris, I'm starting to hate him too. You and me both, man. But let's be adults and figure out why. So unlike in the real world, in the Eat Lead universe, video game characters exist outside of their digital worlds. They can sign deals with developers and put themselves into other games. Eat Lead stars Matt Hazard, a deep-voiced B-movie action hero that parodies Duke Nukem, who's voiced by the fantastic Will Arnett. It's Hazard time. Hugely popular, he ends up signing a lifetime deal with the game company Marathon Megasoft to always be the main character in their games. Hazard spent his years of popularity putting himself into a ton of games that deviated from what made him popular, eventually causing people in the real world to lose interest in the character and move on to other things. In the real world though, there's a new CEO at Marathon and his name is Wally, Neil Patrick Harris. Remember when he said that he hates Matt Hazard? Well, he absolutely hates Matt Hazard. So much that he finds a workaround to the lifetime contract that was signed and decides to make a video game where Matt Hazard canonically dies, which is the only way out of the contract. That's the basic concept here. Wally has this video game where he can toss whatever he feels like into the world. Reusing assets from the previous fictional games that Matt Hazard starred in to save budget, you'll end up fighting the weirdest collage of enemies possible. This lets the actual developers of Eat Lead do anything they want with the world, spawning in cowboys, zombies, space marines, human players, a giant tentacle monster, a Final Fantasy style magic dude, just tons of enemies. Unfortunately for Wally though, Matt Hazard finds out about the plan and has no intention of dying. So with the help of his friends from other games, he sets out to kill everybody that Neil Patrick Harris throws at him. And kill them all he does. 90% of this game is wave after wave of cover shooting and the other 10% is boss battles. With weapons and enemies spanning multiple game genres, there's an entire arsenal of weapons including multiple handguns that are probably the most useful throughout the entire game. They're perfect for lining up headshots and have an incredibly far range and very little recoil. There's also the SMG, which acts exactly how you think an SMG would act, with a lot of recoil. Uh, there's a shotgun, and it's, it's pretty bad. It does almost no damage unless you're extremely close to an enemy, and it just isn't that fun to use. There's the sniper, which is surprisingly useful for getting headshots on dudes that are in the same room that you're in. There's six shooters, just two pretty inaccurate handguns. There's a grenade launcher, which, <clears throat> all right. God, this thing sucks so hard. If by some miracle you manage to hit your target with a direct hit, it still doesn't kill them. It takes forever to explode when it hits the ground too, and the enemies are always running around, so you'll almost never hit anybody with it. Not only that, but it also has a hilariously poor range. Its ammo count is comedically low. On top of that, it's a launcher, so it doesn't fire in a straight line, and there's no real way to calculate the drop-off effect beyond just your feeling. The grenade bounces off of walls and floors as well, and rolls if you fire it at the ground, so Man, it might just be the worst weapon I've ever used in anything. Still, I think all video games have a good and a bad to them. In the case of Matt Hazard, it's considered by some people to be one of the worst games of all time. Playing through it though, there's some good to be had, so let's play through it. It starts with the most obnoxious tutorial in the world, explaining the most basic gameplay mechanics to you by forcing the game to pause over and over and over again with a text box that you can't close for a couple seconds each time which Matt hates and god I hated it too. You're supposed to hate it though. That's where a lot of the comedy in this game comes from. The game does things that nobody likes and Matt makes comments about how annoying they are. Tutorial prompts, endless waves of enemies, crazy long elevator rides that waste your time, missions that are just kill everything that moves. Humor is subjective and I'm not itching to review jokes here but this is a game review of a comedy game and when the jokes here are either making the game as annoying as possible to annoy the player as a joke or making subtle references to other games without anything else to go off it's kinda gotta be brought up. More on the comedy writing in a little bit though. The good comes from the constantly switching environment and enemy types and the weapon types. Keeping track of what weapons you have in your arsenal for the enemy types on display is super fun and the way the game freely transitions from fighting normal enemies in a dark gray environment to parodying Wolfenstein, I don't know, it's good. Unfortunately these moments are pretty rare and the shtick of fighting different versions of human enemies like cowboys in a non-western environment, it's cool for a few minutes but it gets old after 8 hours. Boss battles though are another high point for the game, well when they feel like being a high point. Some of the boss battles you fight are really basic quick time events with very little effort put into them. I like quick time events usually, it's a nice 
payoff to a big fight to at least feel like you're participating in the slaughter of an annoying boss battle with spectacle in a way that wouldn't be possible with normal attacks of a game. Here though, it's just punching and kicking with no set pieces or anything to spice it up. The general enemy designs are pretty fun either way though, with the Marathon CEO spotting in every game trope and stereotype they could think of and afford to develop. The rules of the game here are to absolutely always use cover. Using walls as cover is best since they don't break like the cover items that are placed in the game canonically by Fragme Industries. You'll mostly hide behind things, line up your crosshair with a head if you have time, poke out, and shoot the enemies. It also does that uncharted one thing where you can stand in a corner without taking cover and kind of shoot through the wall without being seen, which is really nice. We'll get into power-ups while we talk about the rest of the game, but you'll want to save those for big moments when you're getting spammed by annoying enemies. You'll want to constantly manage your ammo and your weapon selection to make sure you have the best gear for the enemies being thrown at you as well. Also, backtracking is something you're going to have to do since sometimes enemies spawn behind you. It's smart to walk into a room and then immediately back out of it if there's no closing door behind you. This lets you see where the enemies spawn, so if you die, which is extremely often, you'll at least know for next time. And last but not least, in the late game, you want to try to always have a space weapon in your arsenal, as these do the most amount of damage and have a super good accuracy with the blind fire. Man, I'm making the sound way better than it is though. Alright, so the game starts with that tutorial level. From there, you get the extremely basic gameplay mechanics down and start getting thrown some enemies to deal with on our way to collect money from Mr. Chang. It doesn't take long for you to realize that you die extremely easily in this game. A couple of hits and Matt goes down, forcing you to respawn instantly with the push of an X button. Maybe I'm just bad, but I think the developers clearly knew that this was a bit of a grind each room until you succeed kind of game. When I say each room, that's because that's almost all of this game. It's a room to room shooter. So in this first stage, we fight some dudes in a stock room for a restaurant, and then a kitchen. We fight some dudes there, then some hallways, then a dining area. You enter a room, the door locks behind you, you analyze your cover options, and then fight wave after wave of enemies that spawn in until you can go to the next room. This gets old playing it, and you'll see as you continue the video, it kind of gets old hearing about it. Who might you be? The name's Sunny Tang. That's Sunny as in Sunny, your ass is gonna get kicked, and Tang as in what? Tang! So this guy is Mr. Chan's security bodyguard, and it's a boss battle. It's all a quick time event. Then he's dead, and you go to shoot waves of enemies in this room. And then you do it in this room. And then in this room. And then this room. This room. This room. It finally ends when you meet... Who the hell are you? Your worst nightmare! Except in the daytime when you are not asleep. Oh yeah? Well, you better... What? He shoots Matt, but... Then we're introduced to QA, who's with us for the entire game, and who pauses the game and explains that the developers erased all of Matt's game saves, and that that bullet would have killed him forever. <sighs> That's a hell of a thing. That guy you just KO'd was Sting Sniperscope. He's referenced in the code for every level of the game. But you, you're only in level one. Look, babe, there's gotta be some mistake. I'm the star of this game. No, you're not. The code shows that there was going to be a plot twist that took you out as the player character and put Sniper Scope in your place. And don't call me babe. So this guy is gonna be the final boss then. He's gonna replace Matt Hazard as the main character for the series once the developers kill Matt off to get out of their lifetime contract. Then I guess... It's hazard time. Um, yeah. She gets us out of here and brings us to this level. So he kills the guys in the kitchen, this room, this meat freezer, and this room for a solid half an hour if you can physically put up with it for that long. I almost stopped playing here and accepted that this game was the single worst thing I've ever played in my life, but I'm at least a little happy I didn't. Cause then the devs start spawning in cowboys. Son of a... If I didn't know any better, I'd say that was Jebediah Bedlam. He's the leader of that gang of bandits I fought in a fistful of hazard. Finally, cowboys. It switches things up. It's something different. But no. Now, the enemies are just cowboys. You shoot them all. Move to the next room. Shoot them. Move to the next room. Next room. Next room. Next room. Next room. I could do this all day. Watch. Next room. Then he gets to the manager's office where he shoots some dudes before his next mission. 
which is to shoot everything that moves. Next story beat. I have once again proven Soviet superiority by managing to smuggle nuclear device into country right under your hoses. Noses. The <laughs> noses joke is the first time I laughed in this game so far. But anyway, uh, boss battle. General Nutrinov. His goal is to fire a nuke and Matt's goal is to stop him. Three phases. He instantly kills you over and over until you figure out what you're supposed to do. Russians constantly spawn in while you're fighting him too. Shooting you and throwing grenades at you. Like every bloody room in this game, you're going to die here quite a bit. Eventually, you end up at the top of this thing and have to blow up some nuke clamps before you can run across the bridge and push a button to stop the nuke. The next level is loading now, and it looks like they're about to ambush Bill Schindler. Bill the Wizard? From Overlords of Wizard World? Nah, he'll be fine. He's what, level 75 by now? This is an extremely obnoxious rescue mission with a sniper rifle, saving an extremely obnoxious and unfunny wizard stereotype who's being shot at by enemies. Ooh, if I had my staff, I would scold you! You've got to snipe them as soon as possible, or else this stupid idiot moron wizard dies and you have to retry. This means that you need to know exactly where the enemies are going to spawn in from, so you pretty much have to play this mission a bunch of times before you can actually beat this. Oh man, once this horrible garbage is over with though, we're introduced to my actual favorite enemy in the game. QA, they just hacked in a new enemy. Get this, this time somebody screwed up. It's a commando from Socom, that kid-friendly shooter I did a while back. The one with water guns? Yeah. The worst these guys are gonna do is get me wet. Target spotted. Liquidating target. So these guys have water guns, obviously. They also receive extra damage when you shoot them with water guns. So throughout the game, every time you see one of these guys, you're going to want to kill one with whatever weapon you've got, and then keep one of the water weapons in your inventory for when more of them inevitably spawn. The water guns do very little damage to normal enemies though, so you basically got a water pistol and a water SMG. Two hours in, and this is the first time the game actually does something creative and legitimately enjoyable with a new gameplay mechanic revolving around managing your inventory. Finally though, something to spice up the boring shooting. Once you kill just a couple of these guys, Matt, ah, for the love of Jesus Christ, I legitimately wanted to shoot guys this time. The last thing I wanted was another sniper protection mission, but well, here we are. But wait though, this time, dudes spawn in behind you the whole time while you're trying to snipe. God, I can't even begin to explain how much I hated the game at this moment. Once you've done that though, uh, we finally get to have a water gun fight with the people from Socom. 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 <laughs> Get it? It's actually a good one. I like that joke. Shoot dudes in the room. Shoot dudes in this room. Shoot dudes in this room. And then you start avoiding snipers. The one hit kill you if they aim at your head too long. Then you shoot more dudes. Whatever. Eventually, this drone starts shooting at you with a mounted gun and unlimited ammo. So you gotta navigate your way around the building while timing all of your runs. You can't kill this thing. It's just here to annoy you while you shoot your way through. More rooms filled with dudes. You're going down, Hazard. Look at me. I am bigger and have more ass badness than ever. Well, I'm betting I can kick your upgraded ass just as easy as I kicked version 1.0. Perhaps you will get your chance if you can get past my little friends, that is. Oh, yeah. I forgot we were chasing this guy. Oh, man. Alright, so our next mission is to kill the commandos and get to the other end of the room to trigger the inevitable boss battle with Sting Snap. Alright, we gotta go room to room and kill people until we get to a boss battle. I hate Matt Hazard. There's water gun guys here and the normal gun guys here, finally for the first time. At least there's that. The boss fight that we get as a payoff for all this room-to-room -room fighting, though, well, it's a quick time event, yeah. Man, oh, dude, where is Neil Patrick Harris, though? I just want Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah, there we go. Twice I've sent my new next-gen action hero into the game to kill Matt Hazard, and twice Matt Hazard has kicked his ass. And do you have any idea 
How much that pisses me off! Hazard must be getting help from somewhere inside the company. It's the only explanation. He's probably continuing the game to buy time for his friend to dig into the code. But if he finds out we're onto him, he'll leave and we won't be able to touch him. Well, so far, when Hazard has encountered one of his old game friends, he's gone out of his way to help them. Maybe we can throw some more of his friends into the levels as bait. That's a brilliant plan! Ideas like this are why I'm going to be the best game company CEO in history. So, they decide to throw Matt's friends into the game. QA tells Matt that they're throwing Dexter into the game. So, you fight your way through his mansion. Room to room, you get it. And then all of a sudden, zombies start spawning in. These guys are kind of a game changer too. You've either got to keep moving despite the fact that it's so easy to die, or you've got to headshot the zombies, which involves peeking your head above the cover. If you're being shot at by a bunch of enemies, it, I find it's best to go for the enemies first so that you can get a proper shot on the zombies. But if you stay still for too long, you've got to deal with the zombies. Another easy way to kill these guys is to use the freeze power up. So. As you get kills, you fill the power-up meter up there on the right of the HUD icons. See it? Once that's full, you can push up to activate freeze or down to activate fire. Freeze is pretty sick. How powerful your gun is affects how long it takes to fully seal somebody in ice. And it's really useful if you have a garbage weapon and need to take on something heavier, in the later game especially. The fire power-up is the exact same as freeze, except it just does more damage and doesn't freeze them in place, or give you the cool ice smashing animation. There's also these things sprinkled throughout the level that QA drops in at random. If you walk up to them, you'll either get a maximum hazard, which gives you an enormous damage buff, or a shield, which makes Matt temporarily invincible. So anyway, room to room, fight the dudes, die a hundred times, and get to your buddy Dexter. Well, well, well. Matt Hazard. Long time no see. Uh, Dexter, buddy, you need to get moving, or you're probably gonna die. I think you might have that wrong, Matt, buddy. He's got a robot version of Matt's ex-girlfriend, and some other robot girl. So, to kill these robots, you gotta shoot them till they bend over and then run up to melee them. They're actually a pretty common enemy type in the game, and they're pretty annoying to deal with due to the game's reliance on you staying in cover usually. Still, it's more spice to the generic gameplay, so I'm all in. Alright, boss battle time, yes! Jesus. Man. Thankfully he gets away, and we've gotta chase him. So, could it be... Could it be a real boss battle? No, it's just another quick time event. He lets them live too, cause... As far as I'm concerned, when it comes to friends, even ones who have screwed me over, it's never hazard time. So anyway, Matt leaves, and then uh, he goes into this little area, and he gets cornered by a bunch of zombies. Hey, QA, I'm sorry. I promise I'll never call you sweetheart again. Why not? I was just starting to like it. So this obviously evil QA brings us to this boat where the mission is to, you know, kill the bad guys and keep moving forward. And we do that, and we get to another one of Matt's friends. That's Master Chef from Crown of Light. He's no match for the Space Marines from Hazards of Hostility. Yeah, Space Marines. Like the water guys, these guys have the laser guns from space. They go down easier from lasers, and the lasers kill Matt shockingly quickly. Like one or two hits and he's down. They're weapons, so the energy blaster is basically just a handgun, but it overheats and has to recharge. It's got ammo too. The benefit here is that it's stupidly accurate and does a really high amount of damage. And then we got the plasma rifle, which you're able to charge up to level 3 and let go, which fires an explosion that one hit kills most enemies and damages people around them. So anyway, Matt kills all these guys and saves the chef, who cares? Oh, settle down. If you had anything important to do, you wouldn't be playing a game. <laughs> God, dude. God, I hate this game so much. I don't want to! 
shoot the space marines, shoot all the space marines, go into this room, shoot the space marines, go to the deck of this boat, shoot the space marines, go over here, go into this movie theater, go over to this room and shoot the space marines. This level has been one ambush after another, what gives? Hey, nobody's perfect. Anyway, I thought danger was a turn on for you action hero types. What the hell? Don't listen to her, Max. She's, She's an, an imposter. imposter. Yeah, I hate to ruin this stereotypical evil twin moment, but I already know that you're the imposter. The bad advice, the cavalier attitude, the whole coming on to me thing. Oh, gross. See what I'm talking about? So, you figured it all out. Then finally, she spawns in an actual boss battle. A change from shooting enemies, finally. So this guy is the Tentacle Beast of Tram. It starts with him smashing the ship deck randomly, which kills you in one hit. At first, it seems like there's no way to know where he's gonna hit. And so you're gonna die. And then you're gonna die again. And again. Eventually, you figure out that he charges up his tentacles before hitting. So if you run to the last body hit, you'll be safe. If that wasn't enough, there's space marines that spawn on the deck as well and shoot at you. And if you try to take cover, you'll get smacked with a tentacle. Even if you do find a spot that's safe from gunfire and tentacles, you've got to keep killing the space marines for ammo. So once the tentacle gets stuck, you can shoot it and it won't attack again. Two more tentacles and that thing is history. Again. Yeah. Then a giant tentacle appears alongside the small tentacles and more space marines. You die a couple thousand times but eventually figure out to target one tentacle at a time and focus on blowing up the bombs that they pick up, which also of course kill you in one hit. Once you've done this for all three tentacles, you get a checkpoint. Oh, and then three tentacles appear on the side of the boat and you gotta shoot them all one at a time too. Uh oh. Let me get this straight. That idiot Dexter and his robotic bimbos didn't kill Hazard. Hazard ended up on a yacht, and the yacht blew up, taking one of our most expensive creature models with it, and you don't know if Hazard is dead because the level has been wiped from the server. Um, uh, yes, sir, uh, but he must be dead. How could he have survived that? So far, he's survived everything we've thrown at him. Dig through those files. I want proof that he's dead. And if he's not, I want to know where he is. Yes, sir. So QA brings us to a warehouse. Captain Carpenter might be a whiz at killing off rabid crabs and turtles, but he can't handle a gun to save his life. <sighs> I guess there's no talking you out of this. Nope. It's, um, time for me to go to the warehouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fight through a warehouse for half an hour to save Captain Carpenter. He's the head of Fragme Industries who makes all the crates, explosives, and pieces of cover for all the Marathon Megasoft's games. An actual end goal to care about then. I'm all for it. And truthfully, pretty cool level design all around here. It's actually got color and a cool set decor rather than just walls and boring props. There's conveyor belts, weird science machinery that glows purple more cool water gun enemies, and then suddenly, we're introduced to a new enemy type. This is certainly underwhelming. The secret soldiers of the Vafrathin. Ha! <laughs> they must be really reaching to dig up those 2D World War II rejects. Don't be so sure. They might look silly in a true 3D environment, but they're still dangerous. If it makes you happy, I promise I'll be extra careful around the paper target bad guys. These guys are surprisingly easy to kill. Their aim accuracy is so low that they aren't much of a threat. Their main gimmick is that they go down in three hits, and after two hits, they'll turn to the side and become impossible to shoot for a second or two. 
Pretty cool enemy concept. Once you're done fighting waves of dudes, it brings you to another cool boss battle. This is a parody of Final Fantasy. So it begins with an extremely long and unskippable written dialogue sequence that you have to read before the actual fight begins. Just kind of stalling while it plays for a minute so you can see just how long it goes. I'm going to cut it off here though. He's got his HP displayed right beside him and he'll fight you with a couple of different attacks. Mostly, he'll spawn this giant red circle that follows you and instantly kills you if it hits, which keeps you moving. But the thing is, he also spawns in endless waves of enemies that you gotta fight while you're dealing with him. And on top of that, he heals himself while you're fighting the enemies. Pretty easy fight though, honestly. I finished this one with... I think I did die, but not very many times. Hey, look at this. This log sheet shows the destination of the last shipment that left here. Wasif Docks. That's the map for the final level of the Sting Sniper Scope game. I have to get there, now. Matt, you realize they're going to use the stuff they stole against you, right? Yeah, but it's the final level. Theoretically, if I beat this one, the game ends. Watch your ass, Matt. Well, I appreciate your concern about me. And my ass. But I'm gonna make it through this. This had better be good news. The next time somebody gives me bad news, I'm going to use their nuts as pinballs in my arcade. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, we did confirm that Matt Hazard was the one who stormed the warehouse. No, really? You think? And I suppose he got away? Yes, sir, he did. But most of the shipments did leave the warehouse as planned. Unfortunately, Hazard got to Altos Tratus before he could be deployed. Anything else you need to tell me, Downey? Like maybe that you've lost Hazard again? Oh, no, sir. The programmers say he's being uploaded to the final level of the game right now. Now that's more like it. We need to throw everything we've got into the docks level. Tell the programmers to buy me some time! Third time's the charm. <laughs> Yo, it's the final level of the game. Thank God. It's a dock level, and we've got to fight our way to this giant boat that's over there. There's normal enemies, there's water gun enemies, space marines. Literally every enemy that you fight throughout the game appears in this final level. This is the part from the start of the video where I said when the game's good, it's really good. It's too bad the entire game wasn't this good though. This level's honestly really fun. You get into kind of a flow state while you're managing your inventory and just headshotting all the dudes in a row. I don't know, it's, it's honestly really fun here. So anyway, Sting the Sniper Wolf appears. Didn't I already kill you? Twice. Yeah, baby, but that was the old Sting. This is the new and improved sting. I thought the last sting was the new and improved sting. Well, yeah, but now I am newer and improved. Uh, I mean, just look at me. Look at these abs. Look at these packs. Look at this armor. Look at this mother humping gun. Hey, man, can I just shoot you now, or are you going to be dragging this out? I think we should drag it out. It's kind of my thing. You fight a couple of waves of dudes first, but eventually you end up here, where Sting is up in this protected tower, and you gotta move from cover to cover, which gets deleted when he shoots it. You've really gotta time your cover swaps, otherwise, you just die. Honestly though, running is way more reliable and faster than switching cover with the in-game cover system. You make your way up closer to him, and he takes control of this massive one-hit laser from the sky that he, for some reason he has which you've got to shoot these little pod things doors to open them and then guide the laser into them to blow them up three times meanwhile you're also dealing with enemies anyway final boss time finish him he So, the game's over and I made it through alive. You think Wellesley will abide by the rules and let me go? He'd be in major legal trouble if he didn't. Well then, what say you and I go someplace nice and celebrate? I know this nice Japanese steakhouse. That's a little shot up, but... Matt, any woman would be thrilled to be with you. But trust me, 
It would never work out between us. But, come to think of it, there's one thing I would like to do, right now. Really? What's that? Roll the end credits. Yes, it's finally over. Guys, guys, it's over. I know I focused more on the positives at the start of the video, and I know I said that all games are good and bad. No, 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 no! Stop rolling those damned credits! Smile while you can, Matt Hazard, because I'm not finished with you. Not by a long shot. All right, Kay, no, you're right. We, we still have to kill Neil Patrick Harris, and uh, we do that through a giant office building. That's the entire level. It's... It's just in a giant office building with waves of enemies. Everything's brown and gray and, and more brown. It's an office building. I don't know what you want. It goes on forever, too. Anyway. Sir, we've thrown everything we've got at Hazard. Our AI is no match for him. Screw our AI. Starting now, I want every person in this company logged into the game. It's time they stepped up and put their own avatars on the line. <clears throat> Everyone, sir? Yes, every programmer. Artist, tester, hell, even the marketing and sales guys. You too, Downey. Uh, sir, <laughs> I don't actually play the games. <laughs> I mean, I'm a producer. Don't make me get the scissors, Downey. So these guys are just real world players instead of AI. Why a real world human is better at the game than an AI that can be as good as the developers want it to be, I have no idea. But these guys are really just normal enemies with more health. They don't really do anything special. They do have a heck of a lot more health though. The best way to kill them is with a revolver, which downs them in two hits or one headshot. All right, I'm just gonna fast forward now. The real final boss. Come on, Matt. You're not that fast. And honestly, I'd hate to have to de-res you before I can make my big pre-boss battle speech. Wally Wellesley, I presume. In the virtual flesh. You're in my game now, Hazard. And this time, I'm going to win. Is killing my friends part of your game? Give me a break. How many frags have you racked up today? Hundreds? Thousands? Your little friend with the glasses was my first. And, as it turns out, I'm willing to stop it too. This rifle is my own personal invention. A couple of shots, and poof, you're de Based on your friend's reaction, I'm guessing it's kind of painful. But I'll tell you what. Apologize for all the grief you've caused me over the years, and I'll make it quick. Mr. Wellesley, I'm sorry. But I intend to take my good sweet time killing you. He spawns in nothing but the most annoying of enemies. A bunch of these robot girls that you've got a melee, tons of zombies, dudes with lasers, all the things that kill you really quick and force you to move from cover to cover and not stay still. It's a good thing he doesn't have a sniper rifle that kills you in one hit though, right? Well, welcome to phase two of the battle. Here, you need to move from cover to cover without getting hit by a sniper rifle in order to reach these little computers that deactivate his force field. Then, a thousand more enemies spawn in from the sky. You've got to deal with them, which is fine, because at least he's still not shooting at us with the sniper rifle. You kill them all, you hit the computer, and then it's another phase of dodging more sniper shots. And then, now we've got to deal with another wave of a thousand enemies while being sniped. They throw enemies that make you run from cover, too. God, I don't even... I hate this game so much. Finally, we deactivate a shield. At this point, there's nothing I want more than a quick time event boss battle and to just end this game, which... Now, finally, it's no more hazard time! Dexter, I owe you one, buddy. No, Matt. After what I almost did, I'd say I'm still in your debt. Uh, uh, Should I take him out? No. You and the darlings make sure the building is clear. I'm about to get the beat the snot out of Wellesley with my bare hands trophy. Not good. Not good. Don't hit me. Don't hit me. Don't hit me. 
Wait, wait, wait. As the CEO of this company, I demand a rematch. Shut up, Wellesley. <laughs> Game over. You did it, Matt! Yeah. I just wish that QA could have been here to enjoy it. Who says I'm not? I'm outside the program, remember? That was just my avatar that got derezzed. Hang on. We're setting up a link so we can talk face to face. There. Wow. I thought your avatar was a knockout. But now that I see you in person, I gotta say that you are a... Hey, QA! Dick. Guy? Does this mean you don't want to take me to that Japanese steakhouse anymore? No, it's just... No. Dudes are cool, but I'm not... <laughs> I'm just messing with you. The real name's Quentin A. Myers. I'm one of the senior programmers at Marathon Megasoft. I was the lead programmer on some of your early games. Well, I'm surprised Wellesley didn't can you when he took over. Yes, that is odd. I'd ask him about it, but the SVGA goon squad just hauled him away. So now that Wellesley's out, I guess the company's history. Actually, no. When I heard Wellesley was going to purchase the company, I bought 49% of the outstanding stock, with an option to take majority ownership should Wellesley be forced to step down. Well, that sounds great for you. How does that help us? Now that I'm in charge, I get to make any game that I want. And I think that it's high time we brought back the classics. Congratulations, Matt. You're back in the game. And that means... No. No, please no. Oh, God. Okay, fine. Matt Hazard, Blood Bath and Beyond came out six months after Eat Lead. It's a side-scroller shooter with some pretty cool mechanics. You can shoot enemies in the background by holding L2, and you can manually aim in 360 degrees by holding L1 to stand in place. It sends wave after wave of enemies at you that you've got to run around and shoot endlessly while moving from room to room. Sound familiar? It seems like this is a way better game, but I'm just not in the mood for this right now. It's got a cool knife attack that's automatic when you're up close, which is pretty sweet, and you've got grenades that are useful for blowing up larger enemies. You've also got hazard time, which does this. Maybe I'll come back to this some other time, but for now, let's just finish up the Eat Lead review. Overall, it wasn't the worst game I've ever played in my entire life, but the little things add up to make it an objectively bad game. There are good parts to the entire thing as a package if you can grind your way through the nightmarishly boring opening few hours, but there's nothing to hook you into actually wanting to do that. The story is practically non-existent, the gameplay is painfully generic at best, and downright terrible at worst, and that affects the comedy in a huge way. It's hard to laugh at a character's jokes when their in-game sequences do nothing but inconvenience you for a joke. And like we said at the start of the video here, most of the jokes are just exaggerated stereotypes and brief references to other games. I didn't talk about the graphics, but you've seen them throughout the video. It's gray, bland, and boring for the most part. Interactive objects appear like they're floating. Lights sometimes don't cast sh any shadows on you or the enemies. It's certainly not a pretty PS3 game. Mad props to them for using their own internal engine instead of Unreal, but still. It's extremely difficult, which is good in its own way. I was thinking of it as something like Trackmania, where you're trying to get the best times possible by constantly grinding restarts until you've aced a track time. You've got to kind of constantly grind restarts to get through a lot of these rooms and the battles to memorize the enemy's spawn locations, and be content taking cover at every opportunity and hoping the enemy doesn't spawn right behind you. The voice acting from Will Arnett and Neil Patrick Harris is solid, with their lines delivered exactly how I expected, and I mean, that's all I really have to say about this. It's a mediocre third-person cover shooter, and it doesn't ever stray more than a step away from that. That's it though, guys. That's the video. Thanks for watching. If you uh, liked it, feel free to toss me a like, and if you want more reviews, maybe a sub. Till next time, though. It's hazard time.